non-citizen possession statute. The judge went along with his argument that living in Chicago's little village neighborhood, he needed a handgun in his possession for self-protection and safeguarding property. Mike Hammond is legislative counsel to Gun Owners of America. In our organization is uh, two minds on that. We had a big, big discussion, and no one could agree on what position we should take on this judge. I guess my general attitude is that you can't basically allow them to pour across the border and then say, oh, well, kept them from getting guns, so we're okay. Hammond says others at the meeting had a different opinion. Such as our attorney, Rob Olson, who are outraged that this judge is basically, quote, giving illegal aliens guns, close quote. Hammond says illegals are the problem. The people need to be kept out of this country rather than allowed into this country and thinking that somehow gun laws are going to save us. I'm Chad Groening. Illinois is prepared to go over the cliff again in undermining parental rights. A bill is under consideration that would allow children 12 years old and older to secretly apply for Medicaid to pay for family planning services. Ralph Rivera of Illinois Right to Life tells AFN that's not a shocker in light of the way parents are already treated. In Illinois, minors can get birth control and things like that under a separate law. And that's been that way since the late 60s. And a minor who is pregnant can be considered an emancipated minor and they could get other things. Like an abortion. Under the current bill, a minor could get an abortion, transgender services, anything Medicaid offers, without the parents being informed or their consent obtained. Rivera says such bills will continue to be introduced and sometimes passed unless residents of the state get into action. We are in a state with a super minority in the pro-life, pro-family issues. And that has to change by going to vote. People in Illinois and, of course, for the people all over this nation. That's the key to correcting a dysfunctional government or one that has lost touch with the views and concerns of voters. I'm Charlie Bucks. For American Family News, I'm Rusty Pete. Well, good evening, everyone. Another Friday night. Yes, that's what it is. Another Friday night. And uh, all we got is each other. Yeah. And uh, so far, it's just me and Epicus in the chat room. And uh, I can see there are a number of listeners on our various channels. So welcome all. Um, I was testing out my... the. The chat number that I have right here on the screen and I think I got it working so you could call my computer on the same number so you can text or chat on the, I mean you can you can text or <laughs> call on the same line but here's the thing I have it has caller ID so and uh, if someone wants to call me and say nothing all the time um, then I can but I haven't tried it yet I mean, I tried it for my cell phone, but it, it can't, it doesn't really work because I'm here in the same room. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, you realize the difficulties. I was going to grab someone today to help me uh, test it, but it didn't happen. Anyway, good to see uh, genetic modification has arrived in the chat room. <laughs> 
And uh, here we are. Epicus, me, and genetic modification. This, that just doesn't sound right, to put it that way. Okay, still haven't got a name for genetic modification. Was that Harold? Hmm, maybe someday we'll get an answer. That's right. Um, okay, well, you know how this works. <laughs> Um, I had a nice nap because uh, uh, I stayed up really. I was up really late last night. Sometimes after I get it get done here, I'm kind of uh, naturally wired so that it's harder to go back to sleep. Uh, I go back to sleep to go to sleep, but anyway, I finally made it to bed about one o'clock. So that's, that's usually, that's on par for me. That's a little later because, you know, before I was doing the night program, I was going to bed about mm, 12 or 12.30, somewhere around there. Um, Epicus says, I am banned from YouTube, so I don't hang there. Oh, you got banned, huh? Yeah. Well, they kept giving me strikes and they keep taking down videos, so I'm not putting all my marbles in their basket, but I will fish in their pond <laughs> as long as I can. Because, you know, uh, Christ has made us fishers of men, so I'm just fishing in every pond I can. That's that's all I'm doing, just out here fishing. Yeah, so, uh, yes, yeah, so come on. So anyone wants to try the phone number the, to call the text line, it may or may not work, but from what I hear, um, from what I hear, the phone that I have is really bad. <laughs> I can hear people all right, but for some reason they can't hear me, so I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe I need a new, but if this works, I'll just get rid of the other phone number altogether. So why not? Somebody will try it for me. So I'll just keep asking. Then I then I can get rid of the phantom caller for good, because because I have a feature on this uh, on this line here, this text line that I can block people if I don't want them calling me. Yeah, and they'll just get a message saying that that number can't be reached or something or yeah, who knows what the message would be. <laughs> Only the blocked people will know. And here we go. So in, someone calling me on the regular phone line and not this one, okay? And we know who it is. Any guesses at who this is on the phone? Anybody? Uh, good to see you. Hi, Karate, in the YouTube chat room over there. Let's see. Uh, your name and uh, anything else you want to tell us before we get rid of this phone line altogether. Come on, speak now or forever hold your peace. Nothing? Okay, you heard it. Well, you didn't hear it. <laughs> it's Guy Fox, right on cue. That's what a uh, genetic, yes. Maybe I better watch out for the, the, uh, the dynamite under the floor, right? <laughs> With Guy Fox around. Yeah, good thing he doesn't know where I'm at. I'm in the southern Sierra foothills somewhere in the secret location. <laughs> yes, secret location, the undisclosed location. That's where I'm at. Just, just for people like, uh, oh, well, yeah, Guy Fox and others with ill intent. All right. I guess we'll, we'll look at the, uh, what do you call it? The Babylon Bee, that's what you call it. Here we are, Friday night. And uh, turning to the Babylon Bee to see if we can find something. Ah, the top six health benefits of cigar smoking. Hmm. Yes, indeed. I've hung out with people smoking cigars before. and uh, But I still didn't want to smoke. Yeah. So I gave up smoking when I was on my... 30th birthday. I woke up on my 30th birthday and never smoked 
another cigarette again. I started smoking when I was 13. Yeah, started smoking my father's cigarettes just before he died. <laughs> Probably from smoking. Yes, most likely. So that's the way that works. Smoking scars make you look cool. Oh, it makes you look cool. Yeah, uh, everyone knows that. But did you know there are also a lot of health benefits? It's true. Enjoying the scar not only shows everyone how manly you are, but it pays off physically as well. <laughs> uh, I guess it's supposed to be funny. What do you guys think? Any any cigar smokers out there? Mm, I guess not. So, all right, let's see. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Checkmate. <laughs> Trump sneaks back into White House, invokes squatters' rights. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes. If it new if it works in New York City, it should work anywhere. Yes, yeah, so that's what we should send them all to Washington D.C. Yeah, in into the Antichrist lap. They're, that's what they're doing. They're they're sending them to to the wrong place. They should be sending all the squatters to Washington D.C. I mean, if they're going to keep them in the country, at least send them where they belong. Send them to the people that sent for them. Does that make sense? Bad, bad Ron DeSantis. He should have sent all of those plane loads of squatters to Washington, D.C. And, you know, because they all love Joe Biden. Joe Biden, Joe Biden is sitting at the border. I don't know if you've seen any of the, the videos. These guys don't know how to speak English, but they know how to say Joe Biden. They love Joe Biden. Joe Biden's their, their sugar daddy. Yeah. Going to let him take over the country. That's right. Okay, anyway, good one, good one, Babylon B. Trump sneaks back into White House, invokes squatters' rights. Indeed. Um, see, if you've been... Uh, oh, let's see. The experts are wrong again. <laughs> yeah, if you've been accused of being a crazy conspiracy theorist, this shirt is for you. Yes, expert zero, conspiracy theorists... Uh, something anyway moving on okay let's see what else we got here media says border crisis not an invasion is simply a group of military age males using force against our military to enter and occupy the country not a good look if you're trying to say it's not an invasion to have them uh yeah using force against uh, our military to enter and occupy our country uh, it looks like an invasion, it uh, walks like an invasion, it quacks like a duck, you know, you know the old saying, yeah. Uh, see, Epica says, someone gave me a Cuban cigar once, it lasted exact, oh, it, it tasted exactly like horse manure. I asked him why anyone would pay to smoke something that tastes like that. Hmm. Well, you know, Cubans are poor. <laughs> so their cigars taste like dung. At least when I, the occasions where I hung out with people that were smoking cigars, they didn't, they didn't smell like horse dung. And believe me, I know what horse dung smells like because I have horses. Is that what you said, horse dung? Uh, I started smoking my parents' smokes when I was... Uh, nine i was a chain smoker for decades i quit cold turkey in 06 because i couldn't afford everyone else's habit yeah well i quit cold turkey on my 30th birthday and uh when i was 30 years old <laughs> used oh and i started smoking when i was 13 my father's cigarettes of course yes Ah, oh, yes, and at the same time that I was visiting him in the hospital while he was laying in his deathbed but didn't know it yet. Indeed. Okay, next, something a little more lighthearted here. Um, dozens injured at Capitol after omnibus bill tips over. 
you know, I, I just heard bits and pieces of the, of the omnibus. So as a matter of fact, um, all they're saying is that the status quo continues. Another bill funding. I mean, you know, I thought, isn't Congress, isn't, uh, isn't the legislature, isn't Congress in charge of the, the budget, you know? And then, of course, the Senate representing the states, but not anymore, uh, representing super congressmen instead of state senators, because that's all the senators are now, because they don't represent the states. Yeah, they, they're super congressmen. And that was passed unlawfully, too. This is another law that never was, but couldn't have the states messing with the federal government and having their say. Yeah, I don't know how the states let them get away with it. They know. I mean, follow the follow the trail. But anyway, that's a whole another topic. Uh, dozens injured. Capital after omnibus bill tips over. Uh, so it continues. Joe Biden still forgiving debts, which he has no power to do under the Constitution. Um, buying votes is really what he's doing. Because you know, if Joe Biden, if Joe Biden forgives your ten, twenty, thirty thousand, fifty thousand whatever your debt is that you uh, took on for your education. And it was, it's overpriced. So I think mean, education is overpriced because, simply because the government got involved with it. If they had never got involved with it, it'd still be the way it used to be. Yeah. The government ruins everything. It gets its greedy hands on. Yeah. So Mike Johnson, yeah, that's the guy, the head cheese voted to pass. Um, a Trump hand-picked head cheese. <laughs> well, I don't think Trump picked Mike Johnson. I don't know who picked him, but yeah, what what a disappointment. That's all I have to say. We were just as well off with the other guy that was before him. Yeah. Uh, this guy has his head in the uh, in the quicksand of Zionism because of false eschatology. Mike Johnson, that's where he's at. So he has to get the money for Israel, no matter what the cost. Even if he have to, if he has to give it to Ukraine too. So, yeah. So, we got Joe Biden spending money on the billions on the border, trillions, whatever. Now, uh, a trillion dollars every ninety days. Crazy. It, it, it can't it can't go on can it can it go on i mean you know they can keep printing money out of thin air but the inflation they can't stop that you know there's there are laws of economics at work here that are undeniable as long as they keep printing money and and the way they're printing it the inflation's going to continue to grow exponentially and that's the scary part when it starts growing exponentially cuz you know where it ends because history repeats itself. It does. It does. At least that bit is going to repeat itself. Let's see. What else? Planet Fitness adds bid, big, oh, bigot alarm to shame women who don't want men in their locker room. Mm. Yeah. I think they ought to go the way of Bud Light. That's what I think. I think a lot of these corporations and big box places ought to go the way of Bud Light. Uh -huh. Next, Hamas scientists struggling to figure out how to make emergency food rations explode like a rocket. <laughs> yes, ill intent. Yes, the world is full of ill intents. Okay, man playing video game with his mind claims he's only losing because he got the Mad Cat's Neuralink. Yeah. I don't know what a Mad Cat's Neuralink is. I get the Neuralink part, but not the Mad Cat's part. Anybody? Yes. Okay, let's see what else we got here. I think we're at the end. Yes, indeed thesextalk.com helping parents have the sex talk with their kids well I hope it's uh, 
from a biblical point of view. Likely is if if they're advertising on Babylon B, I hope. Anyway. Okay. It's what happens when you get rich. I mean, then people want to throw money at you to to get their ads on your emails. Can you imagine that? Doing so well financially. It's hard for me to imagine since it's never happened. I can only imagine it by seeing it happen to other people. Okay, let's see what else we got. Um, check out these reactions. Okay. Oh, this is not the bee. So getting a little bit serious. Uh, this lady went viral for describing what it's like to be a plus, plus sized on a plane. The reactions were what you expect. Of course, I can't put the tray down, she says. So it looks like a problem, yeah. And of course, I have to shimmy down the aisle sideways. Yes, plus sized on a plane. Uh, next, Neuralink's first patient says the first thing he did with his brain chip was to stay up all night playing Civilization VI. See how he's doing now. Eh. Yeah, I don't think I want a Neuralink in my brain. Sorry. I'm not ready to trans uh, transition. <laughs> I'm not ready to marry technology, at least not man-made technology. I'm going to stick with my God-made and design technology. I know it has a fatal flaw because of sin, but God has a remedy for that too. So I'm going to go with his program. Yeah. Let's see. Wholesome and trustworthy children books. Kirk Cameron is here. Ah, indeed. An Alabama football player transferred to Iowa, raked in NIL money there, then transferred back to the Tide just a couple of months later. Okay, football, who cares? I don't. Anybody? Anybody out there care about football? Yeah. How to keep your body count low. Ooh. How to keep your body count low? Oh, that's a New York Post. Responses to this are amazing. While still having lots of sex, how to keep your body count low? What on earth does that mean? Periodically, progressive reverse engineer healthy sex behavior, and they act like they've discovered Atlantis. I have no idea what that means. Y'all just reinvented marriage. Oh, I see. <laughs> Get married. Have all the sex you want. Keep your body count low. Makes sense to me. If you're speaking, if your body count is how many people you're having sex with. Oh, well, the world. Just foreign thinking to me. I see. Why did Wik Wikipedia delete this part of the 1966 strategy to tank a nation that's getting lots of chatter online? Okay, the Clower, the Clower Piven strategy seeks to hasten the fall of capitalism by overloading government, the government bureaucracy with a flood of impossible demands, amassing massive unpayable national debt, and other methods such as unfettered immigration, thus pushing society into crisis and economic collapse by overwhelming the United States. The Cloward Piven strategy from 1966. They deleted that part of it, huh? <laughs> Gee, why didn't why did they want you to know about that? Yes, well now we're living it. So, and I've heard a lot of Cloward Piven strategy lately. So that's what it's all about. It's part of the strategy to collapse the United States of America, and that's exactly what they're doing. In 1966, American social, sociologists Richard Cloward and Francis Fox Piven outlined a strategy for toppling the United States, and it's gone viral this last week. See if you can spot why, it says. So, 
press that. Very interesting. So these guys, uh, in 1966, go, how can we collapse the United States? Good idea. Let's do that. Really? I mean, wh what do they want to take its place? You know, the Soviet Union, Mao's China. Yeah. How many people will need to die? How many more millions for the revolution? Yes. How many more lives will the harlot consume? Okay, this Eli, uh, this headline calling e e getting tongue tw twisted here. Body count refers to kills. Yeah, in some circles, but I think they were talking about sex partners in that article. Because, the, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, this headline calling Elon Musk a mediocre white man <clears throat> somehow real and not satire. Dom and Lemon interviewed a mediocre white man. You know, this they make a lot out of this guy. I've heard him speak. He's not really even he's a worse speaker than I am. <laughs> Have you listened to the guy when he tries to speak publicly? Yeah. He's a very halting and stopping and yeah. So like I said, he's a worse public speaker than I am. But hey, he has the billions and I don't, so um, we're doing things differently. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Plus, um, we need to pray for that guy that he can give his life to Christ and maybe something good will happen with him. Okay, well, you hear the music. I'm going out. Be back in a few. Secrets of the Rapture Is there a 500-year-old conspiracy? A propaganda machine so pervasive and entrenched, yet so elusive that the entire world could be taken in by it, working in plain sight, but unseen by the world for what it truly is? If prophecy is God-given history in advance, why does the prophecy that has conquered the age also exclude nearly 2,000 years of history? What is it that they are afraid that the light of history will reveal. To understand our place in time and prophecy, we must look in history for an interpretation, that which stands the test of time, that which agrees with the Word of God, and history has proven to be true. When cunning fables and fearful speculations are removed from our sight, then we may clearly see what is truly expressed in Bible prophecy, both that which has been fulfilled and that which has yet to come. God's express word is the sword that must be wielded to remove the scales from the eyes and dispel the darkness of deceitful conjecture. Secrets of the Rapture was written to expose that which the spirit of the age has conjured out of the darkness to blind the eyes of the church in the world today. Secrets of the Rapture Deconstructing Pre-Tribulation Dispensational Futurism by yours truly, Nicholas Arthur, is now available at lulu.com and Amazon. Secrets of the Rapture The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis. 
as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. All right, I'm back. Let's see. Yes, indeed. All right. So there we have it. Continuing. Here's what a mob looks like when you exit a Kylie Rittenhouse speech at the University of Memphis. And it's crazy to think it's been almost four years since Kylie Rittenhouse killed those two perps, the BLM riots in Kenosha. So anyway, yeah, forgot all about that, but um, I guess he's speaking. Yeah. And we have another one. Ohio drug dealer evades arrest for weeks thanks to the SWAT team's cleaning lady. Franklin County SWAT team kept trying to take down one Charles Allen, a fentanyl and cocaine dealer, but the wily dealer always seemed to make a clean getaway. Cleaning lady. I don't get it, but whatever. And I can't stop laughing at James Harden contesting his own... Okay, more sports? Not interested. I guess, uh, I guess they spend too much time looking at... Um, yeah, sports for my taste. But here's one. Too funny. Neil Young crawls back to Spotify. Yes, he's got to be an old man by now. That's Neil Young. Man, he, he, looks, <laughs> he looks much, much older than I am. I wonder how old he is now. I'll admit I've always felt a great deal of gratitude to rocker Neil Young not because I've been inspired by his music, but because his insolence and hatred of the American South, specifically Alabama, provided him for inspiration for one of the greatest classic rock songs of all times. Was that Sweet Home Alabama? No. <laughs> oh, it provided inspiration. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, it did. There you go. So he's always been, eh, I'd say... Yes, Neil Young has always been woke. There you go. That's the end of that dot the B. And let's see what else we've got here. Uh, let's see. Great job, Nick. Okay, well, I'm doing a great job, says a high karate in the chat room there. I don't know what I did, but I'm here. Yeah. Sometimes it's great just to show up. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got over here in the chat room. Didn't reinstate my Twitter after a previous band um, right to express myself. We called female busybody Karens. We called um, we called male every busybodies Neils. Ah, I see after Neil Young. Okay, it's getting warm in my studio. I think I need to turn on my fan or something. Or I uh, should have put a t-shirt on instead of a long sleeve t-shirt. Yes, because it's starting to get warm. Summer is coming. Will it, will the summer hot nights chase me out of my studio? They just might. <laughs> Yeah, indeed, we'll see. Okay, well, we have redacted news here. 
and let's check it out. Happy Thursday. Well, this is Friday, but we'll go with it because I haven't seen this one yet. We're just a day, day behind with Redacted. Uh, see, Don Lemon has given us all great lesson how to be a diva. The Daily Mail published his demands for a partnership with X, which included a Tesla Cybertruck, a trip to SpaceX via SpaceX, or oh, a trip to space by via SpaceX. You know, if only they could, they could send him up and leave him up there. <laughs> you know, maybe he's already threatened to leave the USA if Donald Trump becomes president. See, I have... I have at least a hundred reasons for wanting Donald Trump to become president because for all the people that have threatened to leave the country, <laughs> the country will be, you know, exponentially better off if certain people leave it. If all the people that threaten to leave, leave, but you know, they're all wusses. <laughs> None of them, not a one of them will leave. I'll bet you. They just like to threaten like, oh no. We better not vote for Trump. They might leave the U.S. and We couldn't have that. These people, they really think too highly of themselves. What do you think? Yeah. Snow warnings there. Where are you at, Epicus? That you have snow warnings. You must, what, what part of the North Country are you in? <laughs> I'm, I'm a Michigander, native Michigander myself. So... Anyway, published uh, his demands. So, so Don Lemon demanded uh, a partnership with X, which included, I mean, like, really? <laughs> Has he been paying attention to uh, what Elon's been doing with X to think that he would give all this stuff to, to Don Lemon for some reason? Um, a Tesla Cybertruck, a trip via SpaceX and a 15 million per year advance. <laughs> yeah. Just in case he gets fired early, keep the body, I guess. And the right to advise X on all decisions related to news content. As outrageous as that is, you got to admire his inflated sense of self. Yes. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, let's see what else in case you missed it. Uh, the Federal Reserve says that interest rates will be slashed at th at least three times this year. What does that mean? That they're trying to um, stoke the fire under the economy so Joe Biden can get reelected. And they can continue the destruction of America. And because uh, Joe Biden is all for uh, CBDC, he's been implementing it in every department of the U.S. government. Him and, well, O Biden, you know, Obama and O Biden and O Biden together. Yes, Biden. O Biden, that doesn't mean that he's Irish. <laughs> that means he's Obama. <laughs> anyway, the Swiss. The Swiss Central Bank also cut rates to 1.5%. And, just in case you missed it, Ukraine says that they will root out Russian words in kindergartens. Well, that's what started the whole war. They started rooting out Russians. And anyone who spoke the Russian language or uh, adhered to the Russian Orthodox Church, that's what really started the war in Ukraine. It was the Ukrainian... The Ukrainians in in charge in the government against all of their own Ukrainian citizens that were Russian. Really, it, it was a civil war, but the but the Russians came over to help their own people. If you don't know that, if you didn't know that yet, I'm just reiterating it for for the few people out there in the world that don't know it. Okay, so moving on anyway. Russia revoked the citizenship of a man accused of spreading lies about the army. Mm. Those Russians don't mess around. Yeah. Let's see. A hospital in the UK confirms that Kate Middleton's medical records were hacked. Okay. I guess someone looking forward to see what happened to her hacked her medical records. 
guess the question is, where is, where is Kate Middleton? Where can she be? Uh, your name and where are you calling from? Okay, Guy Fox is back. Yes, trying to, uh, don't know what he's trying to do, what plans he has. Okay, let's see. What else we got? Uh, the U.S. has submitted a U.N. proposal and for a ceasefire in Gaza after voting against every other ceasefire proposal since the October 7th invasion. Um, and I believe that the U.N. is the image of the beast because it is an image of the Roman Empire, only through which the Antichrist can vicariously rule the whole earth. Yeah. And if you don't think that would work, don't forget lockstep. <laughs> that was the first big step in using the UN to change the world. Okay. Uh, let's see, a new report shows that at least 200,000 migrant deportation cases were thrown out because the U.S. failed to file the proper paperwork. The government fails to file the proper paperwork, so they throw out the cases. Huh. I think they ought to be firing some people. Oh, no, they're probably doing what they've been told to do. Yeah. 200,000 because the migrants properly filed their paperwork, but the U.S. didn't? Hmm. Okay, the first Neuralink brain chip implant patient played a chess game with his mind. I don't need Neuralink to play a chess game with my mind. Every game of chess I've ever played has been with my mind. What? I don't get it. And I'll take anybody here on. We could set up the chess board. Anybody willing to take me on on the air? Chess on the air. <laughs> I, I promise to be as entertaining as I can when it's not my move. <laughs> I guess you'd have to be a chess player to get that one. Yeah. Because distraction is, is one of your best moves in chess. That's right. Distracting your opponent. Hey, it's a war on a board, man. <laughs> you know, you follow the rules of war. Believe me. Let's see. Next, we get to see gold is up. Ooh, gold broke $2,200 today. Wow, here it goes, people. Here it goes. It, it broke the barrier, $2,200, $2,209, up 0.19% uh, today. That's right. And this is yesterday's redacted news, so, yeah. But there it is, broke the barrier. So when I did a show last night, it was really this. <laughs> hey, we're a day behind, but that's okay. Most people are weeks behind. Yes. We're years ahead of the dominant media. Haven't you heard? <laughs> Good friend. Let's see. Bitcoin is up to $66,975. Rounded out to $67,000 for a bit of nothing. Wow. And it's up 6%. <laughs> Even better than gold. Okay, moving on. But silver is down. Oh, but it's $25. So it's really up from where it was a couple days ago. It was 24 something. So it must have went up and then went back down or something. Uh, not that big of a change, but that's, that's a pretty good jump for gold there. Silver will follow. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, 
Argentina's belt tightening. Yes, indeed. Argentina's president, Javier Millet, is doing what he said he would do, reducing the size of government. Uh, the Financial Times calls us taking a chainsaw to Argentina's state companies. Argentina's decades of socialism grew the government exponentially and shrunk the economy for its people to devastating levels of poverty. Malay was elected for pointing that out. He has cut budgets to government entities with a mandate to slash staff and revamp business, uh, business plan. And I hope that whoever gets elected, whether it be uh, Trump or Kennedy, uh, that they'll take a cue from uh, from what's happening in Argentina. Only Argentina is one state. It's not the United States of America, 50 states. And uh, Argentina, well, they probably have their Jesuits there, but they don't own uh, the capital. It's a whole different setup here in America. We have a 51st state that is a foreign state owned by the Antichrist, put into play by the Antichrist. If you've read Rulers of Evil, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, so um, still, you know, if we got the right person in office and uh, they and they prevented themselves from being assassinated, because people kill over money. But see, Argentina was already broke. <laughs> so maybe there was nothing left to kill over. Yeah, and America's getting there very, very fast. So it's like 50 Argentinas, man. There you go. A lot of people don't realize or think about it often. Like when I say America's 50 states, Argentina's only one. So there's a huge difference. Yeah. And it's run by a 51st state that belongs to the Antichrist. Okay, Argentina's decades of socialism grew the government exponentially, shrunk the economy for its people, devastating levels of poverty. He was elected for pointing that out. Cut budgets to government entities with a mandate to slash staff and revamp business plans. As quoted in Financial Times, all of these companies spend 20% of their budgets on delivering their specific goals and 80% on management costs. So, yeah, that means 80% of their money is waste. It should be the opposite, the, the opposite. It should be 10 to 20% for management and 80% delivery. Yeah, but they got it backwards, and that's how socialism works. Uh, Guillermo Franco's Malay's interior minister told Argentine television uh, network Ellen last month, we must strive for efficiency. Millet calls himself an anarcho-capitalist and has pledged to send as much business back to the private sector as possible because clearly the government has done a crap job of running Argentina. What do you think? Will it work? It's good to see. I hope it does work. It's, uh, it's logical, and uh, hopefully something like that can happen in Washington, D.C., the states need to take everything back that the federal that the that the constitution does not give to the federal government that would fix that would fix most of the problems right there yeah for the states to take everything back that the constitution does not give to the federal government that would be 90% of the federal budget right there gone Okay, let's see. Mess in Texas. Uh, just kidding. Now Texas cannot enforce its migrant bill and arrest migrants who have illegally crossed from Mexico. In one week, Texas went from not being able to enforce its law to being able to enforce its law, and now again not being able to enforce its law. Yet another court ruling to keep the injunction in place. It's, th these are unlawful laws. I, I would just... You know, do what they used to do. Uh, ignore the Supreme Court when they make a bad decision. They don't have power. They're not gods. If they make a bad decision that goes against the Constitution and goes against states' rights, then the states should just ignore it, period. 
what are they going to do? Send, you know, uh, send the, is the Supreme Court going to send its police force in there to make them do it? Yeah. It's like, let, let, them, let them make us. Yeah. Okay. Um, the case revolves around Texas Senate Bill 4, which makes it a crime to cross the border outside the ports of entry, punishable by up to six months in prison for first-time offenders and 20 years in prison for repeat offenders. The Biden administration is suing Texas to stop it in the Supreme Court, while Texas also defends it in district court. More than 9 million illegal immigrants have crossed into the U.S. from Mexico since October 2021, according to Customs and Border Protection data. That's a lot of people. And let's see. What else do we have? A deal for Julian Assange. Let's see if we got any people coming in. Hey, where'd everybody go? Yesterday I had a lot of people in here, and uh, nobody's showing up tonight. Must be Friday nights are bad. I'll have to remember. Take Friday night off. <laughs> I like a little feedback. Yeah, of course, Epicus is doing a fine job uh, for everybody as far as giving me feedback. Let's see. Um, America has the Constitution. No one else does. I think the whole world should demand the adoption of it yeah well some countries have but not enough really and let's see i think digital currency will prove a major snare to be used to force people to take the mark of the beast mm -hmm. yes indeed uh epica says i'm canadian by the way oh thus we have snow. <laughs> yes, the north. Okay. And um, arrest the judges that rule against the Constitution. It's treason. I agree. But who's going to arrest them? Joe Biden? <laughs> the uh, Yeah, who's going to arrest them when all the Democrat communists are in charge? And those are their judges. See? These people are so un-American. Uh, BTB said, buy the book. Uh, here watching uh, may not last much longer, though. It's late for me. Okay, well, good to see you. Buy the book. I do appreciate you showing up and, it, and saying hi. Let's see. We the people under the second... Yes, it's a good thing. Yeah, we the people. Well, we'd have to band together and make citizens arrests and then take it to the grand juries, citizens' grand juries. Uh, we could do that, you know, or we could use our elected sheriffs to do it too, you know, but the sheriffs have to know their duty under the Constitution and to the people that elected them and the citizen, uh, citizen grand juries, uh, sheriffs and uh yeah that would be the way to do it all the state all the grand juries and all of the counties and all of the states um that's i guess we all need to get local and get involved in our uh, local grand juries and with our local sheriffs and then go after these people and uh charge them by whatever statutes we have in our states and our counties or violating the con for treason, violating the Constitution, because they took an oath. And I don't know why these people, how they get away with violating their oath of office, because they do take an oath to the Constitution. They should, someone, I mean, if it's not a criminal, uh, it should be treason, shouldn't it? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Military courts, the military's gone woke. Obama took care of that. Sorry. Yeah, Obama took care of the military. And that's why even while Donald Trump was president, that uh, General Milley bragged that he notified the enemy of the United States. Uh, he, that he said he would notify the Chinese of what was going on. 
in America. I mean, the guy should be in jail for tre- that's out and out tre- treason, and he admitted it publicly, as if he was proud of it. And all of the Democrat communists in charge of our country, uh, working for the Antichrist, all applauded him. They think that's great, but the guy should be in jail. And I hope, if Donald Trump gets back in, I hope he's he's, I hope he goes after Milley, because he should be in prison. Yeah. For life, well, he should be shot. He should be set before. I mean, that is is not the the penalty for treason and uh, military. Uh, I don't know. He he doesn't doesn't deserve a firing squad. He should be hung by the neck. So I hope to see something like that happen if Donald Trump gets back into office. But would Donald Trump have the guts to do that? I hope so. He doesn't have to get elected again, does he? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. They get away because the people let them, and the people let them because they have too much debt and can't take time. Plus, they're afraid they'll lose their socialist security, and they leave it to the next guy. But we're all dead because no one responds. Yes, death of penalty. So, somebody agrees with me. Okay. I'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Nicholas Arthur, and I'd like to introduce you to my latest book, Reformed Prophecy Interpretation, an apology for reformed premillennial historicism in the 21st century. As with primitive biblical Christianity, historicism is the method of prophecy interpretation restored with the advent of the Protestant Reformation and had become so widely held that for a long time it was called the Protestant view. My book is not so much about the errors of dispensationalism or amillennialism, rather it is about the historicist alternative to understanding many of the same passages from the vantage point of prophecy fulfilled in history. For those that desire more than mere hypotheses, bolstered with conjectured speculation, those who require explicit biblical exegesis and verified historical fulfillment, and are not willing to accept speculation as anything other than what it is. Speculation, not truth. This book is for you. Over the last century, this method of interpretation has become almost completely forgotten, even by Protestants. 
in the face of a method that is based almost entirely on future speculation rather than fulfilled prophecy in history. In my book I examine the reasons for this and investigate some of the prophecy which has been fulfilled in the interim as well as present an apology for reformed pre-millennial historicism to the 21st century. If you're interested in a copy of my book, you can go to my website, crosstheborder.org, and get more information there. Or you may also find it at Amazon. All right, I am back. Let's see. Could the United States offer a deal to Julian Assange in order to end his legal nightmare? The Wall Street Journal reports that the U.S. has offered Assange this deal, but Assange lawyers say that this is news to them. Wall Street Journal reports that the Justice Department could offer Assange a plea deal that would end their pursuit of him if he pleaded guilty to mishandling classified documents, which is a misdemeanor. They would count as five years in prison against this crime and end their pursuit according to this report. Only Assange lawyers say they haven't been given any indication that the Department of Justice intends to resolve the case and the United States is continuing with as much determined as, uh, determination as ever to seek his extradition on all 18 charges, exposing him to 175 years in prison. So why would someone inside the government feed this to the press? Are they trying to help the Biden administration off the hook for this? And while a plea deal may be good for Assange, would it have implications? Would it have implications for freedom of the press? Would it mean that Assange's alleged crime could be used against other journalists who seek the truth too? Or maybe they're trying to get out in front because... Uh, Let's see, Kennedy said that he would um, he would free Assange, that he would give him clemency or whatever it is that the presidents are able to do. Yeah. So, Kennedy, yeah. So maybe he's a, he, I think he's a contender for the presidency. I don't know if votes mean anything. <laughs> I really expect Joe Biden to win again. And I expect it to be more evident than ever that he cheated or they cheat on it because Joe Biden doesn't cheat. They cheat for him. They get whoever they want in office. Uh, that is, yeah, the shadow government that works for the Antichrist. Might as well just say it. <clears throat> and I think that's, oh, okay, what else do we have? What's trending? Uh, Beetlejuice is trending only read that once because of new photos of the cast from the upcoming sequel of Beetlejuice. There's a sequel. That was a movie, wasn't it? Yeah. And I thought it was a star <laughs> for some reason. Oh, it's spelled differently. I'll uh, see. Alien Romulus is trending because a newly released trailer for a new movie based on the Alien franchise due out in August. Hmm. So the Romulans are coming out in a new movie, the spinoff of uh, Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek, right? Yes, maybe. And uh, Harmony Day is trending because it happened yesterday in Australia. Harmony Day? Uh, after reading this, I'm not 100% sure what it is, but you're supposed to wear an orange shirt. Okay, never mind. Don't care enough to look into it. Uh, let's see. News by the numbers, finally. Baron Trump turns 18 today. He's fair game now, whatever that means. Um, and there's the phone again. Okay, we're taking odds. <laughs> Is it? $100 says, oh, wait a minute. It's Guy Fox. Maybe it's not. Uh, your name and where are you calling from? 
you know, guy, this really gets tiring. Yeah. I'm going to test my other line tomorrow if nobody's willing to call me on it. And I don't think Guy wants to call me on my other line, but I am get, getting rid of this old phone number that I've been using for years now, and uh, I'm not going to renew it. Probably good for another two or three years, but who cares? And I'm going to start using the other one, the my uh, online, my on-computer text number, and uh, call for a call number since I found out how to make it work. Yeah. So you better call me while you can <laughs> because that's your notice. Anyway, back to Baron Trump. Turns 18 today. He's taller than his father. His father's pretty taller than I am. I know that much for sure. He's not a short man, that's for sure. Uh, turns 18 today, and he's fair game now, whatever that means. Um... 18, that's how old Baron Trump turned this week. NBC senior executive Mike uh, Singleton is under fire for saying that this makes him fair game. By that, he meant that the press left him alone because he was a minor, but as a legal adult, they will leave him alone no more. What will they come after him for? He hasn't done anything public other than be the son of, of someone they don't like. There you go. Yes, indeed. And $4.5 million. That's how much money is in question that was linked to the interpreter for Dodgers player. Uh, the interpreter and friend for the pitcher was fired by the Dodgers in connection to this scandal. I have no idea. Another sports thing, 4.5 million. Linked to the interpreter for the Dodgers player. I have no idea what that means. Don't care. It's sports. Yes. And, you know, I, I wouldn't mind playing a game of ba baseball or whatever. I can't do basketball anymore. Sorry. <laughs> I might be able to do like a senior league baseball or something as long as i have to, don't have to run too fast <laughs> but uh hey i can still throw horseshoes anybody for a game come on over let's see uh what do we got here but we're all okay yes no oh, it was mayor of chicago beetlejuice Lori lightfoot had to look it up Oh, they, they're calling her Beetlejuice? Is that what's going on? <laughs> I missed it. Okay. Yeah. Beetlejuice is trending. New photos of the cast from the upcoming sequel. Okay. I, I don't think that has... But yeah, she does kind of look like... She's a weird-looking woman, I'd say. She looks like an alien. And then I've seen some of her photos di uh, distorted to kind of amplify that look on her. So... Anyway, Lori Lightfoot. Yup. I get it, man. Okay, well, let's see. Going back to this here, wherever we were. Okay, $34. That is the opening share price for the upcoming, upcoming Reddit IPO. So they're all going uh, onto the stock exchange. They're all going public. Going into the public gambling house. So, because uh, I think Trump's Truth Social is going public in a in a week or something. It's supposed to get him a lot of money right up front, man. People are going to put their money in. He gets his share, whatever. All fun, yeah. I, I don't know what I would do with three point five billion dollars. <laughs> But I'm sure I could figure something out. Yeah. I'm sure Uncle Sam would be coming after me. Um, let's say, I, yes, uh, buy the book, uh, 777. Whoops, I forgot to turn that off. Uh, I am monitoring that chat. And uh, let's see. Oh, there's a there's a chat I can't see. Shelly, Shelly R says hello. And okay, someone's going to try to call in. And I accept. And can you hear me? 
in call unlimited talk uh, time hello okay see I'm dead uh, yeah I'm not sure if this uh works or not well you can text me anyway if you can't hear me because that was a problem I was trying to hear myself and I couldn't when I was testing it by myself earlier so it's supposed to pick up my my microphone here and then I'm I was hearing through the speaker though something <laughs> feedback or something okay yes I am monitoring that one so is this the same by the book that's in the uh, BTB oh this is by the book 777 and uh, Shelly I can't see Shelly because her I have a black background in my chat room and her type is in black so I have to go go with my mouse and highlight it it says that's okay with me I'm listening here tonight anyway and uh, yeah so I couldn't see your text there Shelly because it's black on black in my chat room that's one thing I don't like about the chat room try to pick two opposing neutral colors that will show up anywhere in it anyway uh, the call is still going on and uh, so someone could be listening but be, I guess people can still text while the call's going on but um, so if you're calling me and you, you can't it, if you can hear me I'd like to hear that but I can't hear you so um, Jesuit fiend says nearly spread too thin Nicholas Okay, well, I don't know what that means or what it's in reference to. Um, something is spread too thin, though. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so whoever is on the phone, um, I'm going to go ahead and end the call right now. And uh, if you could text me at the same number and let me give me some feedback on the call, if you could hear me or not hear me or whatever, because I can't hear you. If you were speaking, unless this is the ghost caller calling me on the other line too. Right? So, but I don't want to block someone unless I know. So yeah, please text me back. How is the qual quality? It says I'm going to go bad. <laughs> yes, it didn't work. Yeah, it's, it's funny because I tried to set it up because usually you could because I have multiple sound cards <laughs> in my computers. So I don't know which one it's picking. Because like in Skype, I can pick my sound card. And, and, and uh, OBS and everything else, I can pick the sound card. But uh, that one, it's, it doesn't tell me even which one it's picking. So that's why I don't know if it works or not. <clears throat> so I have to be able to pick it. Okay, let's see. I had to spend some, eat some roast beef, potatoes, and gravy. Uh, yes, I had a baked potato with chili poured over, chili and cheese on it for dinner tonight. That was my dinner. It was good. Good homemade chili and a good homemade baked potato. <laughs> Very filling. Yeah. Then I took a real hard nap for about 20 minutes. Okay, let's see. Still can't. Shelly's testing, but it's still all black on my screen. Black on black. I can tell because there's an empty black space. So I can tell there's something there that I need to uh, take my, uh, my, my mouse and highlight it so I can see it. Let's see, potatoes, that's worth spending 3.5 million. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Truth Social. I wonder how he picked that name and why. Uh, doesn't Something called truth doesn't mean it is truth, but I mean, I am on Truth Social. I have the icon up there somewhere. No, I don't. <laughs> I have Facebook, yeah, on my screen there, but I am, I, it took me six months to get on Truth Social. And I don't use any of them. It's just too difficult. I don't have enough time. Let's see. I'm referring to the multiple systems you are monitoring and their interdependence in conjunction with the numerous chat rooms. Oh. 
Yeah. No, it's all there. I can see it. I got two screens in front of me and I got another screen for automation over here. So, um, and it's all working. Imagine that, you know, if you do something good enough, you're bound to get good at it. Right. So nearly spread too thin. Yes, nearly a little bit more. And I would be over the edge. I have to agree. Okay. Well, let's see what else we got here for redacted. We're not done with them yet. Apparently, um, the electric vehicle boondoggle. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Biden administration is pushing electric vehicle mandates, even though car dealers and manufacturers have begged them not to. They just refuse. Um, the new rules unveiled on Wednesday set the strongest ever pollution standards, which many are calling a cover to eliminate gas-powered cars. Well... Hopefully all this will get reversed when either Kennedy or, or Trump get into the White House. Yes. Yeah, we can't, just, we can't do it. And it, the truth is the electric cars are more polluting than the gas-powered cars. They, they should let them just keep working on making them more efficient and more, uh, you know, pollution-free. They were doing a great job. It was really doing well. Uh, the new standards were announced by the EPA, an unlawful agency. Nobody should obey it. Nobody should follow it. It should be banned in all the states. We don't need a, uh, an EPA. It limits the amount of CO2 per mile that cars can emit by 2027. Since gas-powered cars cannot meet those standards, it would push up the number of EVs that manufacturers have to make to hit averages. The truth, and they know this. The truth is, they just don't want people having automobiles. Yeah, they want you all in your ten-minute cities. That's it. The better to control you with. Now the problem is EVs don't sell, so car makers would have to make more cars that people don't want in order to meet those standards. Well, if you can't make them, you can't make them. And in California, they're outlawing selling. Uh, parts. I can't buy parts for my tractor anymore because it's an old diesel tractor. Um, I can buy them out of state and out of country and have them shipped. And that's what I'm doing right now. My tractor is out of business. And uh, so I have to buy my parts from China. <laughs> Indeed, I do. But I will. Yeah, I'll get it fixed. Cheaper than buying a new one. And probably less polluting, too, because to manufacture a whole new tractor makes a lot more pollution than, you know, replacing a few parts in an old one. It's really ridiculous. But they hate diesel. They, they want it gone. Yeah, these people are out of their minds. Yes, I can see your color now, Shelly R. In the chat room there. Okay, this House Speaker Mike Johnson called these new rules misguided. Well, at least he's got something right. He said, this is another radical anti-energy crusade that will limit co consumer choices, raise costs on American families, and devastate auto manufacturers, not to mention create actually create more pollution. More regulations and higher costs are the opposite of what our country needs. I urge President Biden to reverse course and do so immediately. Well, he will not. He's under orders, and uh, he's going to keep those orders. The whole administration is under orders. Anyway, uh, that person who called in, please text me and let me know how the call went, if you could hear me or not, or uh, what your experience was. I really would appreciate it. The person who called me on my text number. You can still text me. I know the texting works, but but the call-in thing. And plus, if I'm not here most of the day sitting in front of the computer, or at least half of the day I'm not here. <laughs> I don't even think I'm here half of the time. Maybe half of the waking day. But I'm in and out all the time. So the phone, if the phone rings, you need to leave a text message. All right. Anyway, well, that's all Redacted has for us today. 
and I'll see what else we have here. Um, let's see, inspired by, oh, American Daily, the TikTok bill, is the TikTok bill constitutional, huh? What else have we got here? FDA will stop demonizing ivermectin under lawsuit settlement. Well, I, yeah, I got to click on that one. If I hadn't already. Um, yeah, so ivermectin, I've known about ivermectin because we've been using it for horse dewormer <laughs> for, for many, many years. And, uh, and if you don't mind the apple flavor, because it comes in a paste and you inject it into your horse's mouth, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of giving it to my cats and dogs, not as much, not a horse dose, but, you know, just a little bit. And they liked it fine, apple flavored. See, electric vehicles are horrible, I agree. Hydrogen propulsion has been available for 100 years, has zero pollution. Oil companies kept it quiet. Electric is horrible, too expensive, can't go far, and batteries die in the cold. They are of for the city. They are of for the city. They are quite correct. Epicus and uh, genetic modification has jumped chat rooms. <laughs> oh, and they blow up a lot and burn your houses down. And a, a lot of apartment fires from e-bikes in New York, from what I hear. So they're very a fire hazard, definitely. Uh, if you have an electric car, don't po don't park it in your garage. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and if it's cold out, too bad. It's it's better that your car doesn't run than uh, you burn to death in a car in a car fire house fire started by your car. Yeah, and they blow up a lot. Yeah, and when they catch on fire and throw water on them, the fire gets bigger. <laughs> Great stuff, man. Okay, so where were we at? Billionaires, big tech. Huh. See, I clicked on a headline, but... Oh, there it is. Blood, in, blood on its hands. The FDA will remove ivermectin. Social media website posts under lawsuit settlement agreement. So, who sued? Yeah. And see, the ivermectin isn't under uh, copy or whatever it is. Copyright. It's not copyright. What do you call it? Same thing, but for products. Uh, so, Big Pharma can't make money on it anymore. And ivermectin is practically a miracle drug, really. We can thank God for something like ivermectin because it's it's so harmless. I mean, yeah, not like some of the things, the, some of the other drugs out there where they have that long list of, you know, you might drop dead, this might happen, that might happen, you know, your eyeballs might pop out or whatever. I mean, when... When they do these commercials, they show all these lovely people doing things and hugging grandchildren and walking dogs and having a fun time while, while they're running down all of the ill effects, all of the side effects of the drug. Great stuff. You're going, really? People are buying this? Huh. Who knows? You have horses, you can get ivermectin. You can get it at any uh, feed store. Yeah. It comes, a, it's an injectable paste. It's because you inject it into your horse's mouth. The It's apple flavored, their favorite flavor. That's right. Okay, so anyway, there's a good story from uh, Children's Health Defense. Okay, let's see. Let's see what else we got. Uh huh. Robert F. Kennedy, he had something to say. He says, My vice president announcement on March 26th. So he's already picked his vice president. Uh, Americans are ready to elect an independent, he says. So, you know, there's our choices. Who will it be? Well, I think, I think Trump, 
from what I'm hearing, the way the way it's looking, I think Trump will get the votes. But uh, Kennedy could pull it off. A lot of young people are on his side. And a lot of Democrats might be thinking of voting for Kennedy because a lot of Democrats are old Democrats. They're not communists that hate America. Those are the new Democrats. Yeah. And then there's the ones that are just evil, you know. Um, they don't care how evil it gets. They'll just keep getting more evil. Like the Bible says that evil men wax worse and worse. And Joe Biden is one of those because he just gets worse and worse as time goes by. Yeah, horrible, horrible man. Okay, so there's that. Let's see, help. Okay, let's check out some articles here. The Twilight of the Anti-Federalists. There's an interesting article. And uh, I hear there's a break coming up. Let's see, the inflation genie is out of the bottle. Which article should I read? A thousand years of prison time is over a six hour, a thousand years of prison time over a six hour delay of Congress? Ah, uh, that's probably about J6. Russia has spoken and the elite West grumbles. And it's... We'll see what we, we'll look at for the next uh, Anyway, your vote, your comments, your questions, links, what you would like to talk about. I'll have to read something. Anyway, I'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our listen and schedule pages on the internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn, the Jewish people are eager, most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more 
using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. fun gotta hit the hay oh, good night uh, buy the book over there in the youtube chat room thanks for showing up let's see shelly r says stay away from pharmakia most of it is poison yes i couldn't agree more so you have horses you can get ivermectin yes i can uh, let's see, Peter Schiff. The inflation genie is out of the bottle. Yeah. In this episode, Peter reacts to hotter than expected CPI report, big trades in Bitcoin, and the federal bill that will ban the popular social media app TikTok. He also notes silver's historically low price, which is nearly 50% of its 2011 high. So in 2011, uh, saying silver was up near fifty dollars then but not so now it's going to it's going to have to catch up uh prior to this week's cpi numbers the market was under the impression that inflation was coming down even if this were true cut rate rate cuts are still a bad idea of course they like bad ideas so conventional wisdom is that the fed has won the inflation war that its rate hikes have done the trick. The inflation genie is back in the bottle. Sure, it's not quite 2%. It's a little over 3%. But we've gone from 9 to 3 so we're most of the way there. The Fed could substantially cut interest rates because we don't need 5% interest rates anymore. The view could not be more widely held yet. It could be not be more wrong. First of all, even if inflation was going down to 2%, Substantial reductions in interest rates would not be warranted because you have to have a positive rate of interest. Positive. Yeah. Uh, this week's CPI numbers were roughly the same as last month's, while the core CPI, which excludes food and energy, and how can you exclude like the two most important things, uh, remain flat. The year-over-year -year headline metric ticked up from 3.1 to 3.2, this is not what you'd expect if inflation was decreasing back to the Fed's 2% goal. Our goal is to keep it at 2 No, the goal. <laughs> See, that's what we got fed from the Federal Reserve. A goal to keep inflation at 2%. And uh, sometimes it busts out higher. But, yeah. Um, what was the goal before the Fed? Oh, money was... <laughs> Uh, money was a set price. Uh, it was so many dollars of gold or so many dollars of silver. Yeah, by weight. Yes, indeed. Yes, gold was $20 an ounce and silver was a dollar an ounce. That's, yeah, that's pretty much what it was, wasn't it? That, that's what they were coining it at. And uh, they didn't need to change that ever because <laughs> it was real money and uh, it didn't change. So certain, certainly some things inflated and the money supply vacillated and prices went up and down by, uh, you know, supply and demand. But everything, you know, pretty much was on an even keel for the first hundred years of our uh, nation.
Oh, you have horses. Oh, she says I was asking if you can buy. Yeah, you can buy. You can buy or ivermectin on the internet. Just type in ivermectin. They'll send it to your home. People doses. You don't need horse doses. <laughs> it's it's not that expensive either. You know, it's it's not under uh, you know, um, whatever they call it. Co it's not copyright. What, what am I losing a word here? Once in a while, I'm losing a word. Having a Joe, Joe Biden moment. <laughs> and I guess that's what we call it now. I used to, uh, I used to call it a teenage moment because having teenagers around, you figure out, hey, they do that too. So it doesn't feel too bad to have a teenage moment. Another Friday night. Indeed. Let's see. So this is more evidence that anybody who thinks that inflation is going down to 2% has their head buried in the sand. Everybody expects the Fed to be able to cut rates because everybody expects that inflation is dead or buried. No, you can't. They're, they're still, they're spending a, tr a trillion dollars every three months. The inflation comes with that. Inviting millions of people into our country and giving them everything and paying for everything is going to cost everybody something. Because we're not paying enough taxes for it. Uh, but that doesn't stop Joe Biden from raising the taxes. Or he suggested the budget raising the taxes. And I guess if he gets his way, if he remains president, because I don't think the House is going to pass his budget, that's why they have another omnibus bill to extend it out. But isn't that just giving them everything they want? Why don't they shut it down? I mean, the Washington, D.C. needs to go on a diet, a money diet. Oh, let's see. All of these trades have to be unwound. All the people who have been selling gold because they thought there was no inflation are going to have to turn around and buy it. Oh, really? People are selling gold? <laughs> yeah. So now they got to turn around and buy it now that it's going back up in price. Let's see. In Bitcoin news, uh, a business intelligence firm borrowed money to fund a massive purge purchase of the cryptocurrency. Yes, it's a major financial blunder. Yeah, you don't buy it at the top, do you? You just hold or sell. Well, I guess if you sell, somebody's going to buy it. Okay, so he's got a lot of uh, boring, yeah, banning TikTok is not an action against China. Okay, so that's the news on inflation. Cutting the rate is not going to do anything. So let's see, what else we got here? The Twilight of the Anti-Federalists. Okay, let's see if we got any comments or anything. Patton writes, that's it, Patton writes. Thank you, Shelly R. See, I knew someone would have the word. The patent rights for the drug ivermectin have, yes, passed into history. So you can buy it pretty cheap, people doses. You, you don't need a prescription to buy it either, I don't think. Yeah, I know people that are buying it. Um, okay, New York was the toughest nut for the Federalists to crack. For here was one state where not only was the population overwhelmingly opposed to the Constitution, but the opposition was also in firm and determined control of the state government and the pol state political machinery. Here was a powerful governor, uh, George Clinton, who would not, like Hancock and Randolph in the other critical states, yield to a sellout under pressure. Clinton had been a highly popular governor since the formation of the state, had a strong political machinery based on the mass of upstate Yule Manry. Yule? Okay, that's a word. And was determined to organize and defeat the Constitution. Kind of wished he had. 
we'd still be under the Articles of Confederation. Yea, each state would have remained separated, except for the reasons that they would come together under the, uh, yeah, we wouldn't have had a Washington, D.C. That would have been great. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, they would have had, they would have held Congress like once or twice a year, and it would have been in a different state every year. Imagine that. Oh, now we wouldn't, the Congress wouldn't even had to met. Uh, they could all do it on Zoom now. They could all do it, take care, take care of business over the internet. They could send the bills out to the congressmen. They and their staff could read them in the state, in the district that they're represented and get comments on it. That's how it was supposed to work. Yeah. But that Antichrist, very clever, you know. Uh, the Black Pope was very clever in, in working that uh, concentration of power in the New World into Washington, D.C., and even providing the property for it in Maryland. <laughs> yes, in Maryland and uh, what's the other state there? Well, he had Virginia, yes, dedicated to the Virgin Maryland. There you go, Catholic colonies, buddy. Uh, still, their final organization was sluggish. It was only in February 8, 1788 that the Albany Anti-Federalists, guided by Clinton, formed a committee to organize the election campaign. The committee, including John Lansing and Jeremiah Van Resslinger, uh, organized the sending of the articles to the press and joined in confidence with other committees in the state. The general headquarters for the Anti-Federalist campaign was in New York City. In the Federal Republican Committee, uh, chairman was the veteran General John Lamb, leader of the New York Radicals since the days of the Sons of Liberty, and other leaders in the committee were merchants, um, Marinus Willett and Melancton Smith. The committee organized and distributed articles within the state, but also to anti-federalists in other states. See, I would have been an anti-federalist then. I guess I'm an anti-federalist now. I think we ought to, the states ought to take back everything. And uh, the Congress and the the Congress should meet. The, the Senate doesn't have to meet in Washington, D.C. All the senators should go back to being picked by the state legislatures because it was a, it was a three, uh, the government was divided into three, the people with the Congress and their representatives, and then the states with their representatives, the, the Senate, and then the uh, executive branch. Those were the three branches of government. The Supreme Court was not one of them. Yeah, they changed all that around. There were three branches of government. The state governments, the people of the states, and the executive branch. Okay, in the Federal Republican Committee, chairman was veteran, okay, I think I read that, John Lamb, but strangely, critically important attempts to coordinate the campaign with anti-federalist efforts in other states were delayed until May when it was already too late. The lack of coordination prevented the anti-federalists of different states from hammering out an agreement on what prior constitutional amendments they should insist upon. As usual, moreover, the Federalists dominated the press, particularly in heavily Federalist New York City, while the Federals were characteristically energetic in their press propaganda, the Anti-Federalists count countered in force as early as October 1787, but Soon, behind the scenes, Federalist pressure was able to close almost all the papers except the New York Journal to anti-Federalist writings. However, the anti-Federalist material was still being published in the upstate press. The Federalists, highly concentrated in New York City and enjoying a cohesive leadership, needed no formal organization. Though pressure... Uh, well, yeah, it was because they had the papacy on their side. They had 
the Antichrist on their side. The Federalists did. See, this is the battle. Yeah. And yes, that's right. Today, America is, well, Washington, D.C. is the military arm of the Vatican. I don't say America. I, Washington, D.C. is not America. It's not one of the states of America. America is the people of the 50 states. Washington, D.C. is is just the military arm of the Vatican with its Pentagon there. Agree. Well, they do use American millet for the military, but um, it's not a very good military today, is it? Yes, with uh, drag queen shows and yeah, people dying of myocarditis or committing suicide and uh, pushing everything... <laughs> everything woke it's a it's a bad bad thing there's no hope in our military in uh helping it to save america or arresting the traitors in our government who's going to do it yeah it would have to be the people through their uh citizen yeah through the powers of the citizen okay anyway this is, um, yeah, an interesting article. I don't know how many people are interested in that. And, you know, I know a lot of people do that. Like, if you watch some shows, they'll say, they'll keep saying, we. And I'm going, they must have a mouse in their pocket or something, because I'm not part of the we. Yeah. What, what the American government does is not what I'm doing. I take no credit for it. Uh, your name and where are you calling from? Okay. Yeah. Guy Fox. And uh, that might have been Guy Fox who called on my other line. But I have his number now. Anybody want it? <laughs> no. I can block him, though. But, but, but I am going to get rid of this phone. Once I figure out the other phone works... Once I figure out how to make it work, I'm going to get rid of this number and use that one for on air. And that way, that'll take care of that problem. And uh, Guy Fox can just listen <laughs> without interrupting me. It's very rude to interrupt. Very rude. Shame on you. Okay, so the Federalists, highly concentrated. Uh, the public pre-election debate was waged furiously in the press and in pamphlets from in and out of the state, although by this time the newspaper press was beginning to outweigh in importance the pamphlet, which had been dominant before and during the Revolution. On the one side were the liberty-minded Clintonian anti-federalists, and on the other were the centralizing Hamilton federalists. The anti-federalists put their libertarian democratic case staunchly. Um, the rich and the well-born few were trying to create a strong government in order to tax and mulk the poorer and productive many for their own power and profit. Thus, one newspaper poet wrote, but liberty, keep thou Columbia free, nor let man use us as we use the bee. Let not base drones upon our honey thrive and suffocate the maker in his hive. That's great prose. Uh, Sidney, who believed that the Articles of Confederation were sufficient for the New York's needs, warned of the people too quickly giving up their liberties for being once lost they are not to be recovered, but with disquiet and disorder. Uh, Brutus Jr., who wrote in the U New York Journal that the framers of the Constitution had high aristocratic ideas and the most sovereign contempt of the common people and were strongly disposed in favor of monarchy. They were proficient at intrigue and greedy for power and its privileges. That's, uh, that paragraph there just screams Jesuitical. The Jesuits behind the scenes. 
fighting hard to steal the liberties of the people and for the concentration of power because they learned over 1260 years that of uh, their overt oppression and rule in Western Europe, they learned that what concentration of power could do and how they could use it and uh, to rule in nations and to rule over the populace because they could corrupt people if they can get them in one place. And that's why Washington, D.C. is such a hotbed of corruption. Now, why we now have the most corrupt president, openly known, openly bragged about his corruption, publicly. I mean, if I bragged about committing a crime that equal to the crime that he committed and bragged about, I would already be in jail, in prison for years, with likely any hope of ever getting out. But him, no. They wouldn't try to uh, get. They tried to convict Donald Trump of the same crime that he bragged about openly. Yeah, tried to get him kicked out of office, impeach him for the same crime that Joe Biden did commit and bragged about. Crazy world we're living in. What crazy times. Governor Clinton himself reportedly wrote, okay, Sydney, who believed that the Arctic Confederation were sufficient for New York's needs, warned the people to quickly giving up their liberties from being once lost, they are not recovered. Governor Clinton himself reportedly writing as Cato pressed a similar anti-federal theme. The Constitution would create a consolidated government at the expense of the localist states. But perhaps the most incisive survey of the libertarian anti-federal case came in a letter to the governor from his brilliant young nephew and future secretary, DeWitt Clinton. From the insolence of great men, from the tyranny of the rich, from the unfeeling rapacity of the excise men and tax gatherer, from the misery of despotism, from the expense of supporting standing armies, navies, placemen, sin secures, federal cities, senators, presidents, and long train of et ceteras, good Lord, deliver us. Wow. Yes. They could see it. The anti-federalists could see what would happen. Yeah, it took 200 years, but here we are. And uh, it seems that there's no remedy. But a remedy is coming nevertheless, because Jesus is coming. Yes. Not soon enough for many of us. We all wish he would come tomorrow, but he will be here right on time, on God's time. So we needn't worry about that. See, on the federal side, Hamilton led the charge against Clinton and responded to Cato with Caesar, a response mostly full of ad hominems and even a thinly veiled threat. It would be best for New York and the country as a whole that Washington should be induced to accept the presidency of the new government and that he should be solicited again to accept command of an army. But by far the lengthiest and most authoritative statement for the right came in a 10-month series of articles by Publius in the New York Independent Journal. The articles were written until August 1788 and were published in a book form as The Federalist. The Federalist, co-authored by Alexander Hamilton and James Madison, with a few artic articles by John Jay, is a remarkable document, remarkable not for its influence or success <clears throat> at the time, which was negligible, for the essays were too high-toned to, in to influence public sentiment, nor were they remarkable as a comprehensive and articulate presentation of the nationalist position. The essays contained in the Federalists were designed not for the ages, not as an explanation of nationalist views, but as propaganda document to allay the fears and lull the suspicions of the anti-federal forces. Consequently, these field marshals of the Federalist campaign were concerned 
to make the Constitution look like a mixed concoction of checks and balances and popular representation when they were really desired and believed to be that they had a political system of overriding national power. What is remarkable is the fact that historians and conservative political theorists have seized upon them and canonized these campaign pieces as fountains of quasi-divine political wisdom, as hallowed texts to be revered, and even as somehow a vital part of American constitutional law. And with that, I'm out of time. Great article. You can find it at lewrockwell.com. Well, thank you all for showing up. May the Almighty bless you and keep you as you travel on the narrow way that leads to life. I'll see you next time. Secrets of the Rapture Is there a 500-year-old conspiracy? A propaganda machine so pervasive and entrenched, yet so elusive that the entire world could be taken in by it, working in plain sight, but unseen by the world for what it truly is? If prophecy is God-given history in advance, why does the prophecy that has conquered the age also exclude nearly 2,000 years of history? What is it that they are afraid that the light of history will reveal? To understand our place in time and prophecy, we must look in history for an interpretation, that which stands the test of time, that which agrees with the Word of God, and history has proven to be true. When cunning fables and fearful speculations are removed from our sight, then we may clearly see what is truly expressed in Bible prophecy, both that which has been fulfilled and that which has yet to come. God's express word is the sword that must be wielded to remove the scales from the eyes and dispel the darkness of deceitful conjecture. Secrets of the Rapture was written to expose that which the spirit of the age has conjured out of the darkness to blind the eyes of the church in the world today. Secrets of the Rapture, Deconstructing Pre-Tribulation American Family News, I'm Rusty Pete. A large mob of hundreds of illegal aliens burst through razor wire and surged toward the border wall in El Paso, Texas on Thursday in a chaotic scene during which guards were knocked over just as the state's anti-illegal immigration law is being held up in the courts.